Hi everyone, I'm Marta, a Stanford graduate student working with Dr. Gao in the Navigation and Autonomous Vehicles Laboratory. In this presentation, I will be talking about satellite ephemeris approximation methods to support lunar position, navigation, and timing. Over the last decade, there has been significant progress in lunar exploration endeavors. Any lunar space and surface user will, however, require position navigation and timing services to fulfill their mission objectives. So the idea of a satellite-based lunar navigation and communication system was born to provide these services. Particularly, NASA and ESA and several entities in the space sector are collaborating to create a satellite network to provide such services called LunaNet. Overall, a satellite-based navigation system will enable autonomous lunar operations and enhance real-time localization accuracy. The satellites that are part of this network broadcast a navigation message to users for localization. This message includes satellite ephemeris, which are the parameters representing a satellite state in orbit. These ephemeris are necessary for users to self-localize, so ephemeris parameterization must be a precise representation of a satellite's true state. The question that we're tackling in this work is how should we design lunar satellite ephemeris parameters to broadcast for user position, navigation, and timing? There exist two primary methods for parameterizing ephemeris of satellite-based navigation systems. The first one being approximating orbital elements from which satellite states are then derived in a preferred uh, frame of reference. Some of the core GNSS satellite constellations use this methodology, and over the years, researchers have proposed modifications to the default algorithms, either reducing the number of parameters or time interval for which the approximation is valid. On the other hand, ephemeris can also be broadcasted as the direct approximation of a satellite state in a specific frame of reference. Extrapolation and interpolation of satellite ephemeris are included in this category of parameterization. Notably, at the past ITM conference, the proposed Lunar Radio Navigation System employed a second-order polynomial extrapolation model for ephemeris parameterization. There are three main considerations that we must account for when designing satellite ephemeris parameterization models for the lunar environment. First, we need to consider the orbit geometry of a satellite-based navigation system. The low lunar orbit and elliptical lunar frozen orbit are orbits of interest for navigation in the lunar regime, but have quite differing geometries. Now, the choice of orbit itself is influenced by various factors, such as desired Earth-Moon visibility, ground coverage, and the station-keeping budget available to maintain orbit. In designing ephemeris models, we must consider different orbital geometries to determine the flexibility of the methodology developed to indeed represent the life ephemeris in orbit of interest by the lunar navigation community. Another consideration involves orbital perpetuations. Ephemeris parameters must be able to capture the varying dynamic environment that the satellite experiences while in orbit. Specific to lunar orbits, the satellite experiences weak central gravity from the main gravitational body, the moon, and it also experiences significant third body influences and solar radiation pressure. The closer the satellite is to the moon, near perilun, the stronger the gravitational pull from the moon. However, the further away, near apelun, perturbations from other body and solar radiation pressure have stronger influences on the satellite dynamics. Finally, the ephemeris parameters we design must meet certain performance requirements. First, we consider the signal in space error, or the instantaneous difference between true and predicted satellite state in orbit. NASA has established the outlined SIC constraints on position and velocity representations to indeed determine whether the ephemeris approximation is an accurate representation of a true satellite state in orbit. Another performance metric is the approximation or update interval of these parameters. The length of time for which a certain parameter set is valid for determines how often the parameters must be recomputed and updated in orbit to then broadcast to the users. So the lower the frequency of this update, the more efficient the methodology developed is. Furthermore, we should also consider the message length of a broadcasted ephemeris. The shorter the message, in terms of bits, the quicker can the user decode and obtain cell ephemeris for localization, which is the ideal case. In this research, we develop an ephemeris approximation framework for the lunar environment that does account for these three considerations. 
we simulate orbits of interest with a high fidelity in-house orbit propagator. We build the feminist models that are representative of a dynamic environment. And we then evaluate the models we built based on the three performance metrics I've outlined prior. In our approach, we first determined which kind of parameterization method to pursue between the orbital elements-based one and a Cartesian-based one. Note that the orbital elements-based model does carry an inherent assumption that orbital elements vary by small amounts throughout the approximation interval in question. This assumption does not hold well in the lunar environment, particularly due to strong perturbations and a fast-changing uh, orbiter dynamics. Furthermore, we seek to decrease the frequency at which we update the parameters to broadcast. In other words, if the number of updates is low, then the more efficient our methodology is, fewer amounts of time we have to go through and recompute these parameters. Therefore, we consider a Cartesian-based approximation model for our research. The problem itself is formulated as follows. We seek to minimize the error between predicted and true ephemeris, and we leverage the known SIC constraints to ensure we design a precise representation of a true satellite state. Therefore, we design ephemeris prioritization models by solving a constrained convex optimization problem. And I would also like to note that in this work, we assume time synchronization, with the global time reference is uh, adopted for the satellite navigation system. I will now address the methodology and then talk about the experiments we ran and our results. Consider a satellite X Cartesian position and velocity in an elliptical lunar frozen orbit, as represented in the moon inertial frame of reference. Shown here in blue are the simulated position and velocities which we take to be the true satellite position and velocity in orbit. We then develop some approximation model shown in orange and estimate this data by minimizing the difference between predicted and true state at the sampled points. We can further constrain this problem by ensuring that the difference minimized at the sample points remains within a certain bound. This bound is indeed defined by the required signal in space error. Adding these constraints, we obtain an approximation model represented by a parameter set alpha, alpha sub x for the x coordinate. This method itself is function interpolation, where we set a specific approximation interval over which we want to find parameters, indeed representative of the true satellite state in orbit. Since we are pursuing a Cartesian based model, we want to find the optimal basis parameter set that minimizes the error between predicted and true ephemeris subject to signaling space error constraints. We do so at each of the three Cartesian coordinates for orbit position and velocity, thus obtaining three distinct parameter sets. Note that since we do this in an inertial frame of reference, the parameter set we obtain for a specific coordinate is valid for approximation of both position and velocity in that coordinate. We investigate the following surrogate models. First, we consider a straightforward standard polynomial basis model whose computation of basis function is relatively efficient. We also consider another type of polynomial basis, the recursive Chebyshev model. And this basis itself offers a near minimax representation, and it is often used for parameterization of planetary ephemeris. Finally, due to the periodic nature of satellite ephemeris, we also investigate a sinusoidal basis. The sampling points are Chebyshev Lobado nodes, and more information about this specific choice can be found in our paper. The basis order, denoted by n in this work, is the primary driver for the number of parameters contained within a parameter set, which then inherently impacts the message length of the broadcast of ephemeris, but I will address that more later. As I've mentioned prior, the parameter set we obtain for position and velocity represents a feminist in a moon-centered inertial frame of reference. However, it is common to localize in a moon-centered moon-fixed frame of reference, a rotational frame of reference. For example, for lunar navigation, it is common to use a mean Earth polar rotational frame of reference. In this framework, we do offer the choice of reference frame representation in orbit 
the conversion from inertial to rotational frame of reference can be done via free one free Euler angle transformation. And we assume that these angles vary linearly for the approximation intervals investigated. So we solve for the angular linear approximation parameters by minimizing the error between the true and predicted Euler angles and obtain an additional set of parameters denoted by the letter beta to be broadcast in orbit. I would like to briefly touch on how message length is determined in this work. So the number of bits broadcasted for the ephemeris portion of a navigation message is directly influenced by the required signal space and error precision. Take this curve as it varies with time. It has a certain curve magnitude denoted by the letter M. So signal space and error sets the precision of the least significant bit. So the leftover discretization error can be rewritten in terms of least significant bit precision and the curve magnitude to ensure that every possible integer digit of a parameter is captured at the required precision. In this case, we do so in a two's complement by the binary parameter representation. To summarize, here is the methodology developed for this work. First, we propagate the orbits of interest to generate the true ephemeris data. We then set up the circuit models for approximation of inertia cell ephemeris and Euler angles. We then solve for both parameter sets, and we do so in Python with CVXPy, since both optimization problems are convex. And if we find a solution to a constrained optimization problem, we refer to it as a feasible or compliant solution. We then take these parameters of feasible solutions and evaluate performance based on the aforementioned metrics. For signal in space error evaluation, we do consider the representation of Sala ephemeris in the moon centered moon fixed frame of reference or the ME rotational frame of reference. So, moving on to experimental setup and results, we consider two orbits listed here. On in the table on the right are the contributions to the satellite dynamics that we take into consideration with our in-house high fidelity orbit propagator. And then listed below are the respective orbital periods of these orbits. In terms of experimental setup, we consider 10 different parameterization time intervals, which are all defined with respect to the orbital period. We attempt to solve the constrained convex optimization problems for these intervals at 30 different points in orbit, which in terms of true anomaly are spaced at 12 degrees apart to provide complete orbital coverage. Now, here's an example of what I mean by this process. Say we initialize parameterization at Apollon. We optimize for a parameter set that provides ephemeris for half of the orbital period, which in this case gets us to the satellite's perilum position. We then take this parameterization and evaluate performance. We do this process at 30 different points in orbit for 10 different approximation intervals. Now, the upcoming analysis will address four primary results. First, we consider the solution feasibility at these two different orbits. We then move on to analyze individual surrogate model performance. We look at the orbital coverage provided by these models. And then we address the message length resulting of these different models. All right, so here is a plot of the number of feasible solutions found for elliptical lunar frozen orbit and low lunar orbit at different approximation intervals. We are not making any assumptions about the basis used for parameterization yet. If we are able to find a feasible solution to the optimization problems at the different initializations in orbit with any, of the basis investigated, we record that as a feasible solution for that initialization and respective approximation time interval. This is just to help us understand how orbit geometry influences the frequency of parameter updates. As shown in the plot, the higher the approximation interval, or with respect to orbital period, the harder it becomes to find any feasible solutions at low lunar orbit. This means that in a framework, low lunar orbit ephemeris parameters must update a higher frequency compared to elliptical frozen orbit ones. This phenomenon is primarily due to a fast changing dynamic environment of low lunar orbit, where satellite Cartesian position and velocity change much more quickly due to its low altitude. 
we will select to know that no solutions for approximation intervals larger than uh, orbital period are found in our study. Next, we explore the performance of the three individual surrogate models. In this presentation, we only show results for ELFO. Similar, similar results were found for LLO, and we refer you to our paper for further discussion. We see that we're able to find feasible solutions with the polynomial and Chebyshev models, but not with the sinusoidal model. Plus, we do know comparable SIC performance between polynomial and Chebyshev bases. Both bases are part of the same surrogate model family, so we do expect them to provide the same precision performance. Later, we will see how choosing one out of the other can be beneficial for a family broadcast. We now analyze the orbital coverage that the two polynomial bases provide in an elliptical lunar frozen orbit. Again, the results for the low lunar orbit are discussed in the paper. Plotted in the histogram on the x-axis are the 30 different installations in orbit defined with respect to anomaly. And on the y-axis is the maximum feasible approximation interval achieved at each initialization. We plot data for two different basis orders, 8 and 14. And we note that polynomial and Chebyshev models provide the same performance in this analysis. We do notice that a higher parameter order is required near Perilun to find feasible solutions even for a small approximation interval. Whereas when we move closer to Apilun, the lower basis order is still able to provide feasible solutions for about a third of the orbital period. This phenomenon is due to the difference in dynamic environment between Apollon and Perilun. In Apollon, position and velocity change much slower over time, while they change quicker near Perilun. A higher basis order is indeed necessary to capture these quicker variations. Finally, we take a look at the required message length for SIC compliant parameter sets in both orbits. Message length is plotted with respect to basis order, showcasing a strong relationship between basis order and message length. Notably, the Chebyshev model outperforms the standard polynomial model in message length for both orbits. This is primarily due to the recursive basis construction that defines Chebyshev co polynomial coefficients, which does decrease the parameter bit magnitude. So, in conclusion, we have investigated Cartesian-based parameterization for lunar satellite ephemeris. We have found feasible parameterization for two lunar orbits with polynomial bases, and noted that the polynomial and Chebyshev models offer comparable SIC performance throughout approximation. Chebyshev models, however, do provide solutions with smaller message lengths. I would like to thank the NAV Lab for the insightful discussion and feedback for this research, and thank you for watching this presentation.